Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Ragaton. Let's level up and then sail the stars. The main character gets an ability and a skill. I'm almost tempted to grab Wall of Rockrete because without Cassie in the party, my main character doesn't have any ways to generate temporary wounds on himself. And one of the Vanguard features is that they can stack temporary wounds, so I'm missing out on that feature altogether. Even if I grab this, it's only one source of temporary wounds, so we can't stack it. And then both Force Distraction and Follow My Lead scale with Fellowship. I think I'll grab Follow My Lead. Until the start of their next turn, the Vanguard gains percent damage and percent armor penetration against enemies in a 2 cell radius around the Vanguard. And both those bonuses scale with Fellowship. Additionally, when the ability is cast, all allies in a 2 cell radius around the Vanguard gain the following ability until the start of the Vanguard's next turn. And following grants 0 AP and 2 MP. The character can move to any cell adjacent to the Vanguard without provoking attack of opportunity. Seems pretty good to me. And coercion here. Now Pascal gets an ability. So either Combat Locust Stratagem, which I believe Jai already has, or Stronghold Stratagem. Let's do Combat Locust Stratagem on Pasco, because then if both him and Jai are in the same party, they can both use this bonus on separate zones. And then we'll grab Stronghold Stratagem on Jai. Then for Cassia, we get an ability. Let's do Inspire. The target gains plus one damage and plus one additional damage for every 10 stacks of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has. But the Master Tactician loses half their stacks of tactical advantage rounded up. This effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. The target uses a heroic act before the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn. They regain 25 momentum. Pretty solid. Alright, Deere gets a skill and an ability. It recommends awareness, but we are lacking lore warp in the party. That's not a big deal. Let's go with awareness. So I'm not a big fan of a lot of the assassin abilities on Adira. They'll be really good on Iliet, but not, not how I'm playing Adira. So I think what I'll do instead... Grab Foreboding. I create an area that lasts until the start of the Psyker's next turn. Our allies within that area gain percent dodge. The dodge chance cannot be less than... a percentage. And then Iliet gets a skill and an ability. Awareness and... Death Whisper. Now, the Assassin makes an attack that does not count toward the limit of attacks per turn, and does not block the Assassin's movement, but deals only 25% of base damage. If the attack is successful, the target suffers the Hemorrhage effect. 
Hemorrhage. At the beginning of each of the target's turns, they will suffer lethality rending damage that ignores armor and deflection. And lethality, a specific assassin parameter that is equal to dodge or dodge reduction, whichever is higher. Argenta, ability and a common talent. I do like Reckless Rush. But I like this more. Wildfire. The Arch Militant's next attack will cost 0 AP, will not count toward the attack limit this turn, and will grant a stack of versatility even if the attack type is the same as the last attack. The cost of this ability is reduced by minus 1 for every 4 stacks of versatility. It doesn't say there's a minimum, so I guess we can reduce this down to 0. Pretty cool. And I'm thinking swift movements on her. Because positioning with the flamer is essential. Jota Faith seems pretty good too. The first effect is circumstantial, it'll be good to have when we need it. But the second effect is always there. The devotee gains percent to armor against attacks of demons and warp damage, and the devotee's resolve is also permanently increased. Let's go with this for now. We will eventually grab swift movements, but not yet. Alright, Jai gets an ability. Yeah, she did have Combat Locust Stratagem, so we'll grab Stronghold Stratagem here. The Grand Strategist chooses one of the Combat Tactics areas. For one round, allies in that area gain percent armor, cannot be overpenetrated, gain immunity to the prone effect, and gain deflection against area attacks. Additionally, they do not suffer injuries for receiving damage. Alright, Heinrichs gets... An ability and a common talent. We need three Psy rating to get... Where's it at? A Sword of Faith. But we're still working our way there. Let's do Wildfire. We just read this on Argenta, so I'm not going to read it again. Then a common talent, we want to increase his Psy rating yet again. Psy rating 2. Alright, Abelard. An ability and a skill. Let's do Wall of Rawcrete. The Vanguard and all their allies in a 3 cell radius around them gain temporary wounds. All affected allies gain minus 50% less uh, damage from the next attack. The effect lasts until the start of the Vanguard's next turn. So I can use this along with... A brace for impact on his first turn when we use my main character to give him that extra turn. Because this costs 0 AP. And this costs 2. So you can get both off at the same time if I cluster my party together. Then he usually doesn't act until far later into each round. So that effect will last a good while. And here, a uh, Krause, because that scales with toughness. Cool.
My apologies, Lord Captain. The enforcers report that your pet Aldari is in a foul mood and is moving toward the captain's bridge. We didn't dare to stop her, but I expect that you have a difficult conversation ahead of you. Please spare me a brief moment of your time, Elantak. Gilead quietly appears beside the throne. Exhaustion and anger set upon her brow. Asurion knows that I do not care about the curious glances of Monkey. I grew inured to them back in the blossoming gardens of the Lilithon. They curse me from afar. They follow my every move. They ward themselves against me. Let them. After all, what can be done with such weak-minded, primitive creatures? And still... One monkey stunt has caused the cup of my patience to spill over. She dared to approach me, to speak to me, and touching my hand, she... she suggested that we withdraw somewhere private. She wanted... Wanted. Kimura. The mere memory of it stirs up a tempest in my soul. Iliad touches her spirit stone, and her face twists with genuine disgust. Yeah, another option but one. Fraternizing with the Xenos. Unspeakable heresy. Show me to this madwoman, and I shall see that she is a suitably punished. She is already dead, Ellen Tark. I could not let the offense go unpunished, so I took her life myself. Yeah, we can't let Azenos run rampant. On a... Imperium ship. Do not ever kill my subjects, Irliot. This is your first and last warning. Then keep your servants on a shorter leash, monkey. Try to imagine, Elantok, being lusted after by a wild beast. It is foul, disgusting, so vile that it makes your very soul shudder. Early is so overwhelmed with emotion that her body starts to tremble. I am also repelled by the thought of a human desiring an Eldari. As you should be. You, at least, have some faint understanding of my feelings, Alan Tark, which cannot be said for your primitive kin. Narrow minds and simple souls. Every day, I feel as if I am caught in a trap, surrounded by a pack of wild animals. I am prepared to pay this price to find my kin, but everything has its limit. Half closing her eyes, she adds, her words barely audible. Uh, perhaps you would stop insulting the human race at every turn. Hmm. Your species is sensitive to the truth. I will have to remember that. Ilya considers this the nods, more to herself than to you. No. We do not want to help the Xenos understand humanity because it could give them an advantage if we ever have to fight. I like option two. We're going to keep them separated. Keep the Xenos away from my people and my people away from the Xenos. Got to dissuade them from interacting. I shall speak to my subjects. You will not be bothered again. Your words warm my soul. Very well. I will leave now. Do not forget your promise. Elliot nods and is briefly lost in thought.
Oh, she disappeared. You haven't heard. Rick Trader's new pet for some of the servants off of the lower level. It's where she lurks now, in the shadows. Hey, didn't that Xeno scum used to skulk around here? Alright, that's how he responds. Fair enough. Oh, we have Pulvis Platinum Silence of Mersegret. Did I ever get the Yeah, we didn't get the Xeno tech. Right, it's showing green. Or is green just resources, not whether or not you have them claimed? Alright, so we probably have to go back here. Lord Captain. I hasten to report the disturbing news brought to me by the machine spirits of the ship. The matter is extremely delicate and concerns Lady Cassia. You see, since her first day aboard, her presence has been a disturbance to the crew's way of life. If you allow, I prepared a detailed report. Libby Report The first incident occurred immediately after our departure from Urak 5. The Lady Navigator chastised one of the ship's runners. After which he went to his living quarters, killed his family, and then shot himself. The second incident was noted while traversing the warp. The Lady Navigator gave the pilots the wrong instructions, and the void ship was thrown off course. For a matter of minutes. But this was enough for the forces of the Immaterium to anger the machine spirits, enough for them to start a fire in the service bay. After that, officers living near the Lady Navigator's quarters began to express extreme emotions. Hysteria, apathy, euphoria, rage. This is quite detrimental to crew morale and performance. The last incident was recorded on Footfall. Around 100 living birds were delivered on board during our stay on Footfall. Each bird cost a hefty sum, but I failed to discover their purpose and subsequent fate. I was also told about a conflict between Lady Navigator, sorry, the Lady Navigator, and the Seneschal. Alas, with no details. If you like, you can ask Master Versarian directly. Things are even worse with Jay Haidari. I intercepted a Vox cast in which she promised she would, and I quote, and that Kasha, if she ever saw her again. If I may, Lord Captain, the Lady Navigator's state of mind worries me. She's self-contained and does not mesh with the crew at all, which is why everyone avoids her. Even senior officers can be superstitious. I fear that only you're in a position to talk to her on an equal footing and improve the situation. For the sake of the crew's safety, and that of Lady Cassia herself. Well, we'll take care of this first. Only two, I don't think that's worth using an extractium on. Okay, let's go talk to Cassia. And also turn in this contract.
We'll check all the factions since our profit factor went up by three. A power claymore. Uh, we'll do maintenance of trading later. A portative manipulator. Using reload for any weapon costs minus one AP less. That would be worth it on Erliot, I think. Or potentially Pascal. I'll have to see what his equipment is. Okay, so I'm interested in trading with him. He likes his holy gifts, so we'll focus on that. I'm pretty sure provisions, armor kits, and all that stuff is all it's worth the same across all factions. I haven't really paid that much mind to it. Alright, targeting visor. Oh, it's Eldari. Increases the wearer's chances to hit targets at a range of 10 or further by 20%. Pretty cool. I just have an empty slot. The heck was that? Did I skip a cutscene by accident? <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. Yeah, this one I'm sure will be stimulating. I've heard rumors that you're not getting along well with the crew. I should have talked to Abelard first. Or Jai. A panic flashes and have ruby red eyes. Your heart starts beating a little faster while your hands go cold. Not here. I'm begging you. Aren't noblemen supposed to discuss such things away from the servants? Cassia says in an almost whisper. Can I back off and go talk to my companions first? Now let us go to my study. No one will disturb us there. Then lead the way, and I will answer all of your questions. Yeah, oh well. May miss out on some dialogue. Hopefully we can still talk to him about it after the fact. Uh, what is it you wanted to talk about, Lord Captain? I have nothing to say to you, your unfounded accusations about my conflicts with the crew. I cannot recall my having a single quarrel with any of your people during my entire time aboard. The messenger you, you rebuked butchered his own family and then killed himself. I haven't rebuked a single errand boy on this ship. Cassia ponders this for a moment. Ah, I think I remember. A kind young man with a shy smile, and skillful fingers with too much rotten ochre on his shoulders. I grew tired of the disgusting color, and advised him to lighten his burden by casting the weight off his shoulders. He did not come the next day, or ever again. During the warp voyage, you gave the wrong orders, which led to the vessel shifting off course, and the service bay being destroyed. I saw something in the warp, something vast, predatory, shimmering with indescribable colors. It came from nowhere and stare stared at this ship with hundreds of hungry eyes, right there in our path. I decided to change the course while it was still possible, but did not want to sh uh, so panic. Would it have been better to tell the crew we were heading straight into a monster's gaping maw? The officers are reluctant to be quartered next to your chambers, 
because of the constant emotional outbursts it causes them. Some even maim themselves and others. I already told you I cannot control my abilities. What else do you fr want from me? Will I be assigned to a pariah, sorry, a pariah chaperone? Will you put me in suppressing shackles? So, uh, the pariah chaperone she's referring to is a blank. Uh, blanks are humans that have no presence in the warp. And their presence can also suppress uh, psyker powers around them. And they're called a pariah chaperone because it's the pariah gene that gives them the blank effect. Uh, would you mind telling me why you needed 100 species of bird and what you use them for? Admittedly, I'm at a loss myself. The day we arrived on Footfall, I sent a request to the ship's quartermaster and asked him to get me a songbird. But he never asked for clarification. And shortly before we left, I had a countless number of cages delivered to me, all wrapped in bright red panic with flickering tints of fear. There was a bird in every one. I was so excited. I thought I'd have a hundred friends instead of just one. They were squeaking so piteously, I let the poor things out. I even fed them my breakfast and dinner. But the stupid birds would not stop chittering, even after bedtime. They were dashing about the room, smacking me in the face with their wings, and defecating. I became angry, and suddenly they started pecking at each- Uh, I lost my spot. Oh, there we go. Pecking at each other's eyes and attacking me. Then I became afraid, and they fell over dead. I do not think I want to keep pets anymore. I think I have heard enough. Will you share your thoughts with me? Yeah, honestly, I think my character would go with option one. Uh, my crew has good reason to fear you. You truly are a monster. From now on, I forbid you to leave your chambers unless absolutely necessary. Cassia purses her lips. So this is what you've decided. Very well. Since we are done with this misunderstanding, I'd like to change the subject. It would only be fair for me to ask you a few questions now, wouldn't it? Cassia hesitates and continues in a less confident tone. Do not mistake me. I'm not going to accuse you of anything. It's just that you're the most worthy interlocutor on the ship on the entire ship and you are always so busy what would you like to ask i read a treatise by Paisius de mobius very recently who claimed that subjects would never believe their new ruler was better than the old one unless the old one had been a tyrant no matter the circumstances the lowborn rabble become deluded about their prospects and rebel in favor of their basic desires what do you make of that <laughs> I can flirt with her after <laughs> banishing her to her chambers. I think option one is the best. Your interpretation of this classical text is not entirely correct. The subjects have grown accustomed uh, to the ruling house. All the sovereign must do is refrain from breaching long-standing traditions. Adjust unwanted laws as gradually as you would shift the bed of a flooded river, and no one will ever make your power take your power from you. Cassie thinks for a moment and then smiles. Indeed, I was not wrong about your merits or your ability to hold a conversation. I hope my second question does not confound you either. According to the 20 tomes penned by the preacher Oistach or Oistach, Istifan, the Forgotten, a mercy and cruelty go through the world hand in hand, but people flock only to one pan of the scales. Would you rather inspire fear in your followers, be magnanimous and choose awe?
One must be a tyrant, a friend, and a jester to one's subjects. Well, not subjects, maybe friends. But yeah, as a commissar, I have to know when I have to lay down the law and pull out my bolt gun. Or, you know, show camaraderie with my fellow soldiers. Not so much the jester one, but you and Joe can have a good time. Keep morale up. What matters is that uh, too clearly discern. Lost my place again. I cannot read today. Uh, one must be a tyrant, a friend, and a jester to one's subjects. What matters is that to clearly discern which role is required at a given moment. There's so much power in your words. Power that makes me want to join you. I understand now why your subjects are eager to follow you. I admit, I was afraid we were too different. And yet, you helped me realize that I can be, be candid with you. But please do continue. I must confess that sometimes I can hardly bear the burden the house has placed upon me. I feel I am not doing my best. Tell me how you, heir to a protectorate, can bear the responsibility for billions of lives day after day and not stoop under all the weight. It is my duty, whether I like it or not. Thank you for your patience, Donald. You're helping me to see the world in different colors. A novel experience for me. Our conversations hold a special place in my heart. Allow me to bid you farewell for now. I'm heading back to my chambers to consider today's conversation. That ended on a fairly amicable note, considering I told her she's not allowed to leave her room ever again. Oh yeah, we need to check out that cogitator on the bridge, I think. The one that uh, Pascal was talking about. Lord Captain. Lord Captain. Yeah, I forgot to talk to Abelard and uh, Jai about Cassia. It's possible I could have backed out of the conversation and come back later, but the option to do so sounded very final. May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little talk, Shireen? Argenta seems to have gotten under your skin. Am I right? Argenta? What could be more beautiful than the sight of a sister of battle, whose mere presence casts light in the dark corners of lost souls such as mine? But, alas, what remains of my sanity is telling me that poor Jai can only admire the radiance of this angel, forsaking any hope of ever touching her wings. The smuggler blushes. Oh, I have no doubt you will. All right. Yeah, I think I can interact with that. If I'm not mistaken. But I'll save that for next time. For now, I'm going to call it here. And next time, we'll check out the Cogitator and continue mapping the stars. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.